Hi, welcome to Alameda Health System Highland Hospital Internal Medicine Residency Program. It's really great to have you all here visit our program virtually. I'm sorry we can't meet you in person. Here's a picture of our campus. And um, here you can see that we have a lot of new construction um, mixed with the beautiful old architecture that is Highland Hospital since 1927. My name is Indu Subramanian and I'm the program director. And this is my eighth year of being here um, as a program director. Um, I'm not originally from California. Uh, I did my med school residency and chief residency at UT Southwestern, um, a large county hospital, and then went on to do my pulmonary and critical care fellowship at the University of Michigan. I joined here back in 2006, and I came here because I had two things in mind. Um, number one, I wanted to work at a safety net hospital, and number two, I wanted to work at a place that had a strong teaching mission. I have loved every minute of my time here at Highland. I think Highland is a very special place and I think you're lucky if you find it. So welcome. Hi everyone, my name is Tamsin Levy. I'm the Associate Program Director for the Categorical Medicine Residency Program here at Highland. Uh, a little bit about me. So I went into medicine late after doing social work for a number of years. I came here after my, I did uh, medical school at UCSF and then a internship residency and chief year at CPMC in San Francisco. And then I came out to Highland in 2013. I came here because I knew it was where I wanted to be. I had rotated here as a medical student. I knew I wanted to be in a county program and a county program in Oakland is really my dream. Um, it's, it's, uh, it, it's still, it remains my dream. I, I think I, I will uh, not be going anywhere any, anytime soon. I think the, the faculty and the patients and the residents are all amazing. And the thing that really keeps me here and keeps me engaged is that people are here for the same reason and they're motivated to make change and, and folks are moving the needle, be it residents and or faculty alike. Everyone is, is active and engaged and, and invested in making this program and this hospital the best it can be. So welcome. Hi, I'm Alex Diaz. I'm the primary care APD. Um, I was born and raised in Miami, Florida. And I've been at Highland since 2012. I matched here as a resident, stayed on as chief, um, and then uh, out of residency uh, was core faculty. I've uh, been in the primary care APD position now for about a year and a half now. Um, and I came to Highland because I was 100% sure that I wanted to do primary care in the safety net. Um, and I've stayed on uh, because I couldn't imagine a, a better group of mission-driven uh, colleagues to work with. And, and also because of my wonderful uh, patients who I've now been taking care of uh, some of them for almost 10 years. Welcome. So we've been around for a long time as a residency program. Here are some pictures of the old Highland. Um, so since 1927, as I said, um, Highland Hospital has existed. Um, and we have had an internal medicine residency program that's ACGME accredited since 1955. Here you can see one of our oldest classes um, and I can tell you that we do not look like this anymore. We do not wear these horrible outfits and we have a lot more diversity, but I like to put this picture here just to show you um, that we've had a very stable and enduring time. I'd now like to read you our mission statement for our residency program. To graduate physician leaders who will provide high quality, biopsychosocially oriented, culturally relevant care to vulnerable populations. So if you haven't seen the movie, um, The Waiting Room, it's, uh, I think there's a link to the trailer on our website. I'd, ha I'd, I'd encourage you to check it out. Um, it was filmed here in our emergency room and it really gives you a glimpse as to who our patients are, the challenges that they face in navigating the healthcare system and what it means to be a healthcare worker here, the challenges and the rewards of working at a place like Highland. I think one of the things that makes us very special as a program is our location in uh, Oakland um, and Alameda County uh, being one of the most diverse counties in the United States. Um, and you can see some pictures here of us um, really being uh, in and immersed in the community um, and some uh, events uh, that we've been to um, as well as you can see on the bottom right, uh, that's us with our uh, clinic patient advisory council. So one of the things we're really proud of is our home visit program uh, that's entering, in, entering its fifth year. 
Um, the home visits program uh, is for both primary care and categorical residents. Um, and in keeping with the differences in the two tracks, uh, slightly different uh, flavor and focus in each one. Um, so something we're very proud of and something that we're hoping to continue um, even through uh, the COVID pandemic. We also have a pathway program at Highland, which is an awesome component. Um, it's for categorical residents. So during your second and third year, you have protected time. Um, you have three weeks in your second year and three weeks in your third year, as well as half days during your ambulatory weeks to dedicate to a pathway of your choosing. We currently have five pathways. We've got research, ultrasound, health systems leadership, health justice, and clinician educator. It's an opportunity to really delve into an area of int that interests you most to become an expert and to get this designation on your diploma. Um, and so you can see here, you know, there's a health fair at the top right, folks practicing all the time at the bottom right, and a research uh, pre presentation on the left. So um, it's, it's something that the residents have really loved and have allowed them to become um, experts in, in, in an area that interests them. We also have an awesome ultrasound curriculum here. Whether or not you do the ultrasound pathway, you're gonna be an ultrasound expert by the time you leave, or you can be, should you choose to be. Um, we've got a, a, a Brandon Besh, who's featured on the bottom left there, who is a national leader in ultrasound, and you'll get exposure to it from the day you enter uh, to the day you leave Highland. So resident wellness is a big priority for us. Um, and had our program in resident wellness has evolved over the years. Um, so initially we started off with um, pods. So protected time for the residents to meet as a class or cohort to either with or without facilitation to talk about the joys of medicine, the things that have gone great, but also to talk about the things that folks are struggling with. So we still have the pods. We also hired a licensed uh, clinical a psychologist who is available to all the residents at various times during the day, evenings, weekends, on the phone or for in-person visits. And, and that has been really, really helpful for the residents. In addition, you can see that the residents, either themselves or through the program or the chief residents, we, we, they all get out a lot. Um, certainly things have changed with the pandemic, but people are still finding ways to stay connected with one another, um, whether it's in-person or virtually. So one of the things I would really encourage you to look at when you're uh, going to different programs, um, albeit virtually now with the pandemic, uh, is to look at the balance of autonomy uh, and supervision in the, in the training program. Um, and I think both extremes are not good, right? Where there's too much supervision and you're just following the attending and do what they say, or you're being thrown into the deep end of the pool uh, without uh, appropriate help. I think here at Highland, uh, we really encourage residents to take ownership of their patients and take the lead on the teams, uh, but there's always attendings there to really offer support, guidance, and teaching, um, and that is support that you have 24 hours a day, uh, including uh, overnight shifts. So diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, this, as, as Alex talked about, our community is extremely diverse. Um, Alameda County is um, either first or second, depending on the poll you look at, um, the most diverse county in our country. And so it has always been a priority for our program to recruit residents who um, really reflect our community and can connect with our patients. And we've done an excellent job of this. In fact, over 90% of our residents are bilingual. And last year we had over 50% of our residents um, identify as um, minority. And so I would like to say that this year, our main focus has been to expand these efforts a little bit in terms of how we can recruit more faculty to support our residents and to also support those who do match with us. And um, so a number of new efforts have been made. One has been to create a uh, di diversity task force at the board of trustees and organizational level and then um, the individual programs, the emergency medicine program, the internal medicine program, surgery residency program, how all different uh, committees within the programs. But the newest addition has been to create a graduate medical education, diversity, equity, and inclusion committee that involves residents and attendings and staff members. 
all as officers and leaders to really link the individual program activities all the way up to the board of trustees to really have forward progress in all the different areas of equity and inclusion. So we are very, very excited about this. And our GME Diversity, Equity and Inclusion a committee is led now by our new DIO, Dr. Pam Sims Mackey, who has a lot of experience in this area and we're really looking forward to um, really expanding our program. We've also got a lot of dedicated teaching time here at Highland. So we've got morning reports, noon conferences, we recently revamped our noon conference series to be an 18 month curriculum so that you, during your time here, get your core medicine teaching at least once, if not twice. Um, while you're here. A lot of bedside teaching. We do, we do bedside teaching during our academic pathway as well as on wards and ICU. We have retreats and we have an awesome grand round series among other things. So our primary care track has a, a mission um, to train graduates to provide outstanding primary care to underserved patients and to be leaders in the safety net. And uh, we've been doing this for a long time. Uh, we were probably one of the first or second uh, primary care tracks within internal medicine. Um, our program is about 40 years old now. It was founded in 1982. Um, definitely clinical focus is underserved medicine uh, with an emphasis on, so on social structural determinants of health. Um, something we're really proud of. And, uh, you know, going to the next slide now. Um, one of the big uh, questions that we always have is, you know, sometimes people will apply to both the primary care and categorical track. Um, or are interested in one or the other, and they want to know what the differences are between the two programs. Um, and I think for the primary care track, uh, one of the big things is uh, primary care immersion weeks. Um, there are two weeks uh, that you have uh, uh, the primary care immersion weeks as an intern, and then four uh, weeks as a second and third year. And this is just an opportunity to really take a week uh, to really solidify and work on specific uh, content areas within outpatient medicine, like uh, palliative care, geriatrics, addiction medicine. Um, you see there, a primary care cohort is something we're really excited about. Just started doing it last year. Um, in our three plus one schedule, we have four cohorts, and one of those cohorts is specifically for the primary care cohort. Uh, so that week, uh, we're really able to focus on primary care topics. We have a primary care journal club uh, that week, once a month, uh, special primary care uh, didactic content as well, and hopefully in the future, COVID permitting, uh, primary care uh, cohort happy hour. In the categorical program, as we mentioned, we have the pathway program, which is open to all categorical residents. Um, we've got more simulation training during the, during the uh, ambulatory weeks. We have the ultrasound training. So um, in addition to having it sort of interspersed in your education, you get a two week elective, um, ultrasound elective during your third year as a categorical resident. We've got the categorical retreat. We have a new hospitalist teaching series and journal club. And then our didactics during your ambulatory week are focused on inpatient medicine. I think the bottom line quite uh, literally and figuratively is that all residents in both tracks are gonna be excellent generalists in all settings. So it, regardless of which track you, you choose, the, you get a very good foundation um, from which to pursue your next move. So all of our teaching, all of our faculty in the Department of Medicine are teaching faculty. But this picture uh, depicts our core faculty. So we have 12 people who are sort of hand selected by the program because of their specific interest in graduate medical education and their training in evaluation and feedback. So you can see that our core faculty are from um, a very diverse background of where they trained, what they're interested in, and each of them has uh, taken on a focus. So for example, Dr. Nick Nelson, is, um, is the one who's involved in human rights clinic and is the lead for the health justice pathway. And Dr. Farzad Nawazid, one of our most new, our newest core faculty is involved as the pathway lead for research. So these core faculty members are assigned to you when you match here. So each resident will get one core faculty member to stay on with them as their mentor for personal and professional development over the three years that they're here. This complements the additional mentorship family program that we have that you'll hear about from some of the residents and also the informal mentors that one will pick for their own scholarly activity or their research project or their career plan. A lot of folks ask, what do our residents do after graduation? And so here's just a little bit of an overview. Um, our categorical residents, you know, as I think we mentioned earlier, they are sort of undifferentiated. They're not sure what exactly they wanna do when they come in. 
So by the time they graduate, they differentiate. So about a third of them go on to subspecialty fellowships. 60% stay on as hospitalist medicine, in hospitalist medicine, and 10%, according to Dr. Diaz, have sort of seen the light and go on to uh, primary care medicine careers. And our primary care graduates do um, what they sort of set out to do, which 80, 80 to 100% of folks within the primary care program in the last several years have stayed within primary care. Sorry about that. Um, so where do people go for their jobs and their fellowships? You can see just a, 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 a few examples of where people go. They've gone all over California. Some have gone beyond California for fellowships and um, our residents never have any trouble getting jobs, whether it be primary care or hospice medicine, if they choose not to do a fellowship. So this is the end of our presentation. Um, I'm sure that you have additional questions. So please feel free to explore those questions during your interview day or email any of us if you have any questions whatsoever. Um, these pictures are our residents um, at our retreat. You know, we go to a beach house in Marin, actually Simpson Beach, um, every year for both the primary care program and the categorical program. Um, the prelims have a separate retreat. Um, so our residents look very happy here. Um, and I just wanted to tell you, um, at the end of this, people often ask me, you know, who are we looking for to come join our program? And I can say that we're pretty clear about who we want to come join our program. And I would say that our program stands for maybe three major pillars. Um, first, as you probably can, all, can figure out already, we're looking for people for whom taking care of the underserved is almost a calling. It's something that you can't live without. Um, I think I, I say this a lot, but I, I feel like you've either got county in your blood or you don't. So if you have county in your blood, you're gonna love it here because you're gonna be surrounded by like-minded individuals and every day coming to work is good because it's what you wanna do. And number two, we're looking for people who don't get frustrated by things that don't work, but instead get galvanized by things that don't work because they see these things as an opportunity to make things better, to move the needle, as Dr. Levy said. We want people to be a part of the change. In a safety net hospital, there's a lot of low, you know, low hanging fruit. We need all hands on deck. Get on board, give us ideas, help us make it better. And number three, you know, as doctors, we are teachers whether we want to be or not, right? We're either teaching our patients, our staff, our community, um, our learners. So, and if you can teach it, you've learned it. So here we believe that we wanna give you lots of opportunity to learn how to be a good teacher and to teach you how to teach. So if those three things sound good to you, then your mission will align with ours and we will be very happy here as you can see our residents are. So I hope you have a great time visiting uh, virtually and please do not hesitate to call us or email us with any questions. And thank you again for your interest in our program.